to breed or not to breed? Is breeding a domestication or a conservation? A question like this is difficult to answer without bias. It is necessary to take a look at several perspectives, try and understand the benefits or the impacts as it's had on the world today. What has it done for the history of the world as well? Whether you are a captive breeder, parrot owner, or, or a captive bird enthusiast, domestic breeding can and does assist in the conservation of wild birds. One of the most important contributions is that it produces birds for trade, and therefore it reduces the pressure on wild flocks of birds than of that same species. For example, the production of a blue and gold macaw in captivity has reached the level where to capture and transport wild birds of this same species would actually cost more and be more expensive than buying a hand-fed baby from a breeder of an avian specialty store. To transport wild birds on the airlines, obtain permits, purchase trapped birds from countries of their origin, and pay the government for quarantine space of the imported birds, and finally, to advertise and ship birds from the wild to customers is a bad memory that we still have, and that we all learned of the horrific treatment and devastation these creatures endured, and many times died for nothing. Domestically produced birds are typically better quality than wild caught birds. Birds produced in captivity are being domesticated with each subsequent generation that they are bred. If wise choices are made during the selection, little change will take place visually, but subtle changes, such as the dependence on humans for their survival, may render captive produced birds incapable of living and breeding in the wild. There are ways to slow down the domestication process, such as allowing the birds to choose their own mates, make their own living quarters more natural, feeding them foods that are normally available only in the wild, and not intervening when they um, are taking care of their nesting process. Never, nevertheless, inevitably, birds produced in captivity are going to change in one way or another. And what is Flying Color Bird Sanctuary's perspective on this sensitive topic? Because of the reasons pre-mentioned, we realize that people will still continue to purchase birds as they did yesterday, today, and they're going to do in the future. Our goal is to improve the lives of those unfortunate who find themselves in critical homeless situation with no place else to go avoiding euthanization. We provide an environment for them to live the remaining of their years in as happy and healthy as possible. The number of birds that are surrendered today is absolutely astonishing. Some of the birds that we have received have been through some horrific treatment. For that reason, our future goal is to partner with those who also work with many of the captive bred birds that end up in sanctuaries today to produce the possibility that a minimum certification on basic bird care be required to purchase or house a domestic pet bird. Those of you, of course, I can hear it now, who have done your homework with exotic birds successfully probably agree with me, but those of you who have always wanted that lovable cockatoo without the past experience of having a pet bird probably are going to leave some pretty nasty comments on this. You probably don't realize that that beautiful, loving, hand-fed baby Moluccan cockatoo that you're going to bring home tomorrow and name her Coral is going to mature sexually in about five years from now, and some very serious behavioral changes are going to take place. They may include attacking your spouse, screaming more often for attention, plucking, flying away when she never attempted to do so before, or even mutilating herself, possibly to the point of death, whether she was loved the whole time or not. At this point, you can't set her free. She's not going to survive out in the wild. Part of our goal is to educate you to the true commitment of having an exotic bird in captivity. To help you as a bird owner educate others and realize that how great the commitment will be, how many years that they're going to live, and the cost of the expectation for all those years. Our goal is not to bash all breeders for doing what is in demand, although it would be more appropriate if they would breed at the pace that is less devastating on the populations. For example, if they could only breed when they have a destination that proves successful placement for the birds that they're breeding, not just to breed flocks of unwanted birds that will perish due to the lack of demand or proper care. The future of these birds is at a critical level for them as living creatures, with few rights for life to protect them. We try to change the world's perspective for the treatment of minimum acceptable living conditions for these pet birds. 
Well, I hope you found this video informational and that you can understand where Flying Colors Bird Sanctuary of North Carolina came from. And I want to thank you for watching this video.